Welcome to the Al Stock Talk, where I talk about numerous investment opportunities, but more specifically, the stock market. Now, in this video, I'm going to go over the best apps for investors. Stay tuned. Now, there's so many different great apps out there, but I just had to compile a list. I'm not ranking them or anything, but I chose the list based off of a certain type of investor. So, if you're completely new to investing, you don't really want to do a whole bunch of hassle, it's really simple and easy, I will go with Acoins. Acoins is an app that costs a dollar. You just pretty much answer some questions based off of your risk level, and then you just end up investing. The coolest feature that Acon has is roundups, where you can round up your, your spare change and all that kind of stuff. Acon is really good, nice, simple, easy, has a lot of great um, great resources and all that stuff. So I'm putting Acon for investors who don't want to have to worry about any type of hassle. They just set their risk level and boom. Next up, I would go with Bitterman. I would go with Bitterman if you are some type of investor where you like to have little control, but not too much control, I would definitely go with Bitterman. Also, I would go with Bitterman if you are someone who likes to pay a little bit of attention to your performance, whether annual, weighted average, and all that kind of stuff. Bitterman has great graphs and all types of stuff. So I'm putting in Bitterman is my next pick for investors. Next up is Robinhood. Robinhood is a good platform where you can buy and sell stocks pretty quickly. Pretty simple platform. And they also now include fractional shares. That's something they didn't have before. The only major downside about um, Robinhood is that they don't have any customer service. So if you wanted to call someone, it could be a problem. So that's why I, mean, I personally wouldn't invest a lot of money inside my Robinhood account. And it's one other thing. Robinhood doesn't have a lot of analytics. But if you're if you're a little bit more experienced, um, I might want to check out this app called Weeble. I personally never used it, but for people who did, I did some research and a lot of people had great reviews on it. So make sure you check that out too. Next up is Stash. Stash is really good for new investors. So if you're a new investor and you really want to learn and you want to have full control, I'm going with Stash. Stash is really good. It allows you to buy fractional shares. So whatever the amount of money you can have, you can just purchase it. That's really good. Another thing is they have a lot of great educational tools. They even got podcasts, great articles that's not biased. And they have this new feature that I had was called Portfolio Builder. If you actually want to check it out, I actually made a video up there. Please check the suggested video. The next thing is they have this like auto coach that really kind of gears you in the right direction. And they give really good advice. And another thing I have, they have something called the, uh, you can auto invest where you can invest passively, that's a really good opportunity. And then the last thing I want to say about Stash, it is very interactive, it keeps you engaged, and they have different types of tricks that really keep you interested in it. So I'm going with Stash. Next up, I have M1 Finance. M1 Finance is great for investors who like to have a lot of flexibility and very dynamic portfolio. M1 Finance allows you to create great, I mean, excellent portfolios really quickly and it also has it where they kind of set your allocation. So you pick a couple stocks and you kind of just let them know what your target amount. Like I want 5% Apple or 10% Tesla, any kind of anything like that. And you just have to auto invest where it automatically keep you within the allocation that you desire. They also have the feature where you can compare your portfolios to experts. You can check out some of theirs. And it's just so many different opportunities. You can make multiple portfolios. You can make uh, portfolios inside of portfolios by sectors. It's just, it's just so many things that you can do with it. So I just have to make sure it's M1 Finance. And by the way, M1 Finance is free. That's a great thing about it. And it also has the autopilot. The only cons about uh, M1 Finance, I will say, it is not for people who want to trade pretty quickly. And there's only two windows where they end up trading, which is, I think, like 10 and uh, 3 o'clock. So I'm going with M1 Finance. Next up is great resources to look at news and financial statements. I'm going with Yahoo Finance. Yahoo Finance is a you know free application where you can find good financial news, look up all the different you know fundamental metrics and stuff like that, and go over the financial statements like the balance sheet, the income statement, the cash flow, all that. So that's what I'm going with Yahoo Finance. Next up, I'm going with to track your investment portfolio, personal capital. Personal capital is really good if you have a lot of different platforms that you invest in, you want to see your overall performance. I would definitely go with personal capital. It's free. It also allows you to manage your all your different assets and all this type of other, other stuff. And if you wanted to know your net worth, you can plug it all in and personal capital will give that to you. And also, if you're looking for a retirement, retirement advice, Personal Capital has this software where they kind of help you and guide you to 
make sure you get to your ideal goal. Personal capital. Next up, I'm going with Mint. Mint is the best app that I can think of for budgeting. It allows you to manage your bills, monitor your spending, and also give you great tips to help to improve your credit score, give you great insight, and it's a great app that you can use to save time and money. So I'm going with Mint, best budget app. Next up, for all you big analytics fans, I would definitely go with Portfolio Visionizer. It allows you to back test, do asset analytics, portfolio simulation, and also risk management. I would definitely go with it again. It's called Portfolio Visionizer. It allows you to back test, create, do different, all types of different stuff with data. And it's really good if you want to base your investment decision based off of the analytics. Okay, That's my pick for best app for investors. I know I went over things pretty quickly, but make sure you check out the description below. I gave you a whole bunch of more detailed information. And if you disagree with something, if you think what I said was wrong, or you think you had better picks, make sure you drop it in the comments below, and I'll definitely check it out. And that concludes Dow Stock Talk. I hope you really enjoyed what you've seen. If you did, hit the like button below. And if you really enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. I'm out.